नमस्कार वी विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग विथ आर डिस्कशन ऑन द सेल्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द सेकेंड मॉड्यूल ऑफ आर कोर्स ऑन सेल्स मैनेजमेंट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अ फ्यू थिंग्स ऑन सेल्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन लेक्चर नाइन वी शेल नाउ बी कंटिन्यूइंग विथ आर डिस्कशन ऑन सेल्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड कंक्लूडिंग इट uh in in this in this half an hour so uh, the various topics uh, which we uh, you know cover under sales organization are the meaning and purpose of sales organization formation of sales organizations uh, sales organization structures uh, field sales organization uh, out of these we have already covered uh, the first two uh, in the previous lecture lecture 9 we we talked about the uh, meaning and purpose of sales organizations we also spoke about the formation of sales organizations uh, in this particular uh, lecture we shall be uh, dealing in greater detail on the various kinds of organizational structures and we also sp will speak about the field sales organization now uh, a quick recap on what we mean uh, by a sales organization structure the sales organization structure which is actually a part of the bigger organization identifies how the various positions or how the various posts in an organization are arranged uh, for the achievement of organizational goals and objectives so uh, in 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 simpler words it is a chart which will indicate the grouping of activities into positions in a structural form and it will clearly mentioned who reports to him so whom so we have the clear cut uh, you know depiction of the reporting relationships of the superior subordinate relationships and uh, you know uh, provi also providing for mechanisms of coordination and control uh, many organizations have hybrid organizational structures which we shall talk of to meet their own needs and these hybrid organizational structures are those uh, which are uh, which which take into uh you know uh, which uh, while they are being structured they uh, do not follow a uh, simple product based or geographic based or market based structures they are uh, combining two or more of these together such that uh, there is one there is there is a subordinate who reports not to one superior but to uh, two superiors so um, it as organizations become more complex many organizations Uh, adopt the hybrid organization structures to meet their respective needs so in so any in any case uh, the organization structure clearly tells us uh, you know depicts to us the various positions the reporting relationships and the various roles that people are to perform now uh, it is actually a structure through which functions of sales management are carried out and it helps managers it helps executives to carry out their functions more effectively and efficiently uh, without any chaos without any confusion without any duplication of activities and uh, the, the people can work better and they can achieve their sales their profits and their market share now the basic management concepts which relate to sales organization in fact they relate to any kind of organization are one concept of centralization and decentralizations two the degree of specialization three the line and staff functions and the fourth which is a coordination and control so uh, when we talk of centralization and decentralization uh, it is a matter of whether pow, you know uh, the, the the number of levels in the organization structure are few or many in the case of centralized uh, structures Uh, you know especially which are more useful uh, in you know smaller organizations uh, where there is one person who who actually is able to uh, you know control many positions under him or many jobs he, he, the many activity he he handles several of the activities and there are large number of people reporting to one uh, which means that the number of levels in the organization also reduce but in the case of decentralized structures there are many 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 levels uh, reporting relationships uh, are uh, several people sev several layers uh, of people support superior and subordinate reporting relationships exist and power uh, and decision making is something which is very very decentralized uh, the degree of specialization would also determine whether organizations uh, f f give for follow highly you know adopt highly specialized roles and encourage uh, you know uh, growth of specialization uh, the line and staff functions clearly spell out the uh, you know the 
those functions which are important and critical for organizational ob objectives to be achieved and those which are support functions and of course we also have mechanisms for control. So, uh, when we talk about this uh, the type of sales organization structures we will deal with the lines and line sales organizations, we will talk about line and staff sales organizations and we will talk about functional sales organizations. Now, in the previous uh, lecture uh, if you recall I did speak about the line sales organizations. Uh, where uh, the, the, the it is more of the uh, superior uh, issuing orders and directives and the people at the lower level are supposed to abide by them. The line and staff roles are where there is a staff or a support uh, activity in the form of uh, you know people who, who help uh, the line and in functional sales organizations these are highly specialized roles uh, which are which, which, which are um, lay, which are given importance. So, um, let us first talk about the line sales organization. Now, these are the simplest and the oldest organizational structures and uh, uh, if you if we go and if we uh, look at uh, them here, they, they, they are uh, where the chain of command uh, runs uh, from top to bottom. So, you have here a general manager and under him you have the sales manager and then you have assistant sales manager division 1, division 2, division 3, division 4. So, the assistant sales manager of the 4 divisions reports to the sales manager and under the division 1 uh, the, the sales division manager for uh, assistant sales division you know for one has several sales people reporting to him. So, similarly, assistant sales manager division 2 has sales people reporting to him and assistant sales manager division 3 has sales people reporting to him and assistant sales manager you know uh, for there is an office staff which handles the office staff. So, uh, you have these different levels here where sales people for a particular division report to the assistant sales manager for that division and the assistant sales manager for the different divisions reports to the sales manager and the sales manager is under the general manager. So, you see here what we have is that there is a you know chain of command which runs from top to bottom and uh, uh, the executives exercise line authority and the subordinate is responsible to the person at the next level. Responsibility is fixed uh, and is suitable for companies where uh, and this, this particular system is suitable for companies where the sales people directly report to the chief executive. So, you have the sales people reporting to the sales man divisional sales managers and the divisional sales managers uh, you know the particular area assistant uh, sales uh, I am sorry the uh, assistant sales manager division 1 uh, is, is in charge of sales people under him. Uh, the sales people for a particular division uh, report to assistant sales manager division 1 and then uh, the assistant sales division manager 2, 3, 4, 5 so forth they may report to the sales manager and the sales manager reports to the to the general manager. So, responsibility is fixed totally, reporting relationships are clearly defined, there is a uh, a chain of command which runs from the top to the bottom and it is widely used in you know where the number of sales people are few and uh, the, the clear clear cut uh, you know responsibility is demarcated and uh, higher executives uh, you, know, uh, you know exercise this line authority and the people at the uh, and the subordinate is responsible to a person right above him. So, this is what we have as a line uh, department uh, or line sales department organization. Now, um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the line sales department organization? So, advantages are it is very simple to use uh, as a department uh, you know uh, members, department members will report only to one supervisor. So, there are no problems or no confusions uh, with respect to you know who has to report to whom they all know that they have one boss and they must report to this boss or to the supervisor. So, problems of confusion are minimized uh, clear cut definition of authority responsibility. So, clear cut uh, delegation of authority defining of roles responsibilities and this saves time with replacement of administering changes. Also uh, close relationships can develop because uh, the uh, superior uh, has a subordinate and the subordinate reports to the superior. So, there is close ties between the both of them and relationships get forged. Also administrative expenses are low because there is lesser chances of uh, you know duplication of activities and any chaos. Uh, there is uh, you know better optimization of resources and so administrative expenses are low. Uh, but there are certain disadvantages of the system as well. Uh, a lot, de lot depends upon the head. 
uh, the head must be highly capable to manage the whole department because of huge responsibilities he may not be able to devote much time to policy making and uh, there is narrow scope for poor planning so he 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 act a lot of uh, you know responsibility for the uh, for the um, you know division lies with the in charge of the division or the sales in charge of the division he, he must be very highly capable of managing the whole department because he has huge responsibilities and he has to deal with many sales people he may not be in a position to give more time or give much time to policy making and so there is narrow scope for poor planning activities now we come to the other one which is a line and staff sales organization now line and staff sales organizations are found in uh, medium sized firms uh, they are also found in large size firms where the large number of employees and it gives provides to the higher sales executive a group of specialists like you know people who are trained in logistics or in uh, you know um, accounting or uh, report generation or sales ex promotion experts or sales analyst experts so because of delegation of authority top executives get more time for a crucial planning the branch head also gets time for planning he can uh, you know resort he can actually contribute much more to the planning activities and um, uh, sales executives do not have authority to issue orders and staff suggestions are shared with the top management so, uh, he, so, so we have this kind of a structure here where you see that uh, there, there is the vice president in charge marketing and he has under him the manager in charge advertising, general sales manager and manager market research. Now the general sales manager has with him you know, uh, people who are specialized, there is a director of sales training, uh, there is director or sales personnel or HR, uh, he has assistant sales uh, managers or assistant general sales managers he has assistant to general sales managers he is sales promotion manager and then the, he also has somebody taking care of the dealers and distributors and the assistant general sales manager then has district sales managers six of them and those six of them then they have their branch sales managers and those which may be another big number 30 32 40 depending upon the size of operations and then the branch sales managers 32 of them may have their own sales force or sales team which may be many so in this case what happens is that the the assistant general sales manager uh, has district sales manager, branch sales manager under him, but he also seeks help from other, uh, you know, staff specialists, whether in the HR function or in the training function or in the sales promotion, uh, you know, function or even somebody dealing with the dealer and distribution network. So here we see that there is a line uh, which is selling, but is also assisted in a big way with the staff functions. Of other, which are very, again a little specialized functions. So, what are the advantages here? Superiors are relieved of uh, you know from detailed work and so they can focus more on strategic planning. The experts uh, in the form of the staff provide a lot of assistance to the field, uh, people working in the uh, you know in 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 in, in you know in their in the sales function so experts offer assistance in specialized fields subdivision of activities into the specialized uh, you know uh, verticals can improve function it also allows senior management to take a broader picture or broader overview of the department however there are disadvantages of the system as well staff members are border burdened with a lot of responsibility uh, the people from the division people from the branch often contact them approach them for different kinds of help and assistance and in case uh, and so administrative expenses are huge uh, also without uh, close control a uh, target may not be achieved and without proper coordination there may be any chaos at the specialist level and, uh, and, and hence control mechanisms are, are strongly required. Then we come to the next which is the functional sales organization. In the functional sales organization what we see is all specialists have functional authority. So clear cut verticals, sales people receive instructions from several others who are specialized in their own different areas and so uh, this is the kind of structure which we have. So there is a in charge or a director of sales administration and he has people sales training, sales supervision, sales promotion, dealer distribution network and manager of sales personnel. So the manager of sales personnel has, has his sales people and, uh, and if you see here um, installation and service manager deals with different <laughs> sales people. Managers of sales training again deals with different people, manager of sales supervision again deals so there is a cross and a, a huge amount of interdependence and cross uh, reporting relationships often leading to uh, you know uh, which kind of 
both pros and cons of this system. So, advantages are it improves performance because specialized activities help in improving performance uh, and effectiveness of the sales force. It makes sales operations highly centralized, creates better efficiency effectiveness, but the disadvantages is that it is not suitable for small structures or for medium sized organizations and because this kind of an administrative level uh, will increase cost and it may not be uh, wise, it may not be very efficient. So, also centralized sales operations in large organizations may, may make the system very inefficient. So, these are the advantages and disadvantages of functional type of sales organizations. Now, we come to the next topic which is field organization of uh, the sales department. And uh, the field organization of the sales department relates to the management of field operations. So, it actually deals with people who work away from the home offices and are stationed in different territories in different fields and it will impl include employees who are sales supervisors, traveling sales supervisors employees, they travel a lot, they do not work in the home office. So, it will include people who are traveling sales supervisors, employees, clerical uh, staff in the branch in the district offices and it also include people who are involved in after sales like service repair and promotional uh, activities. So, the field sales or uh, fields organization of the sales department will comprise people who work away from the home office and they would include both uh, people who are traveling. Uh, whether it is sales supervisors or sales people. It will also include the office staff in the various branches in the various sales districts and it will also include people in charge of after sales and local promotion. So, the two main objectives of having a field sales organization, one is to facilitate the selling tasks and two is to assist sales people in achieving their, goal, in achieving their goals. So, the two uh, the main uh, activities which, which are performed or main uh, you know, responsibilities which have to be taken care of by the field sales organization is one to facilitate the selling activity or the selling task and two to assist the sales people in achieving the goals or the various goals. So, the factors which influence the size of the field sales organization will be the number one the size of the organization and the scope of its operations, two uh, the relative emphasis that is placed on personal selling. So, uh, you know especially uh, this has implications in the B2B and B2C scenario. It will also depend upon the extent of operations the geographical uh, of the company and the uh, geographical spread of the customers whether it is in a state or across states within a country or across countries. The desired frequency of sales calls. Uh, actual customer base and pot potential or prospective customer base. So, both actual and prospective or potential customers, uh, you know, the size of that customer base of actual and potential will also determine the size of the field sales organization. Uh, a little bit about the principles uh, of in Salesforce management. So, centralization versus and decentralization. Centralization, everything is administered from central headquarters. And they are responsible for Salesforce management, including recruitment, selection, training, appraisals, uh, etc. But in the case of decentralization, it is uh, you know they are managed at various levels uh, at the different regions or at the different divisions, and they are handled by the branch managers or district sales officers. So, advantages and disadvantages, of course, advantages are uh, you know of centralization, they are good for small companies, uh, but disadvantages are that uh, it is not at all feasible in the case of larger organizations, it may lead to excessive control and it, this may lead to reduction, reducing the flexibility uh, in operations and a delay in decision making. Uh, with respect to uh, the decentralization, the advantages are it leads to effective uh, you know market uh, uh, cultivation of markets, it leads in it promotes effective control and supervision, improve customer services and reduces cost for territorial break in uh, by allocating same allocations to people from which they belong to, uh, also lower traveling cost, but disadvantages are it is very costly and not suitable for smaller organizations. Now, what are the different uh, ways or schemes for dividing line authority in sales organizations? As I said a little while ago, uh, companies when uh, you know sales organizations are further uh, you know uh, divided uh, in terms of geographies or product divisions or customer or market channel divisions. So, we will talk about this I, I, a little while ago I did mention about uh, geography being a, a dominant uh, you know criteria in uh, structuring your sales organization. Sometimes it could be a product based, sometimes it could be a customer based or market based. 
I also spoke about the hybrid structure. So, we will go into this in little more in detail. Now, geographic division of line authority is when the selling operations are divided geographically and it is suitable in conditions where there is a wide uh, spread uh, in terms of uh, customer base. Uh, customers are spread across different geographical territories and uh, geographic, geographic division is uh, first made into regions which are further branched off as branches. Like uh, you know in our case it may be north, west, east and south India and then northern India may be further broken into different districts or different uh, branches. Okay, so, what we get here is something like this where you have uh, eastern division sales manager or central division sales manager or western division sales manager and then you have branch heads under them and then you have sales people. So, in our case for example, it could be a sales person uh, at a particular territory reporting to the branch and the branch manager reporting to uh, you know the regional office eastern India and the regional officer east, west, north and south reporting to the to the national manager sales. Okay, so, in this case uh, you we have different sales people formed in the north, east and west reporting to <coughs> the branch heads at the north, west, east and south and then uh, the branch heads of the north, east, west and south reporting to the division heads at north, east, west and south and so forth and the finally, the different divisional managers reporting to the national manager. Now, uh, the second way of uh, you know departmentalizing or dividing the line here could be in terms of product division. So, the sales tasks are divided among subordinates on the basis of sales operation for various product lines. For example, if there is a company which is into refrigeration and it also makes cooling equipment or it makes heating equipment uh, you know or it makes um, you know deals with you know uh, uh, you know in terms of cool you know Product, products which are into temperature control. So, it could be products which are meant which are heaters and blowers for hot for for you know for, for the for creating you know higher temperatures or it could be cooling equipment uh, again uh, you know air conditioners or cooling uh, you know structures for cooling the environment. In those cases the uh, sales organizations uh, would be based on the product. So, there will be sales people reporting to the branch head, branch head reporting to others, but clearly the, the vertical would be in terms of product. So, there would be a person in charge of cooling, there will be another person in charge of heating. Why? Because the company deals with both cooling as well as heating equipment. Okay. So, the company is dealing with uh, products meant for climate control or for temperature control and uh, because of this uh, temperature control equipment here which could be for, uh, for, for cooling, it could also be for heating. So, there is, there is one uh, you know clear cut division uh, in the sales dealing only with the cooling equi equipment, there is another dealing with the heating equipment. So, here you have for example, sales manager product 1 and sales manager product 2. So, sales manager product 1 deals with you know the heating equipment blowers and heaters and the sales, sales manager product 2 deals with the cooling equipment uh, which could be you know uh, say refrigeration or it could be air conditioning and so forth or, or say other cooling uh, coolers and things like that. So, in this way you know, the, the, the division here is product based. Okay. Now, uh, another uh, method or another system which can, we can have is customer on the type of customer. So, let us take the same organization if it uh, deals with cooling equipment, it may have uh, a B 2 B customer base, it may also have a B 2 C customer base. A B 2 B customer base here may be institutional buyers who would want cooling equip equipments or refrigeration or central cooling for their entire office or for their factory or for so forth. So, in that case, uh, this particular there will be a sales team and a sales uh, you know uh, uh, division dealing only with the B2B. On the other hand, there is a B2C segment which also buys refrigerator uh, refrigerators or it buys air conditioners. So in those cases, it is going to deal with the B2C scenario where uh, it is end use and uh, the sales force here does not deal with the institutional buyers but deals with the members of the trade channel or the marketing channel with dealers, distributors and stockists. So, here the customer or marketing channel division uh, you know the, 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 the division of line authority is based on the customer or on the market segment that is being catered to. So, so we have here where you have sales people reporting to the branch and this branch reporting to a particular uh, you know industry uh, you know which is say lumber uh, as, as a customer group 
or it could be another industri industry which could be mining as a customer group. So, they have two different customer groups which they are catering to uh, you know. So, uh, either in terms of customer or in terms of a market segment. So, here uh, you know as a similarly uh, they could also have a line uh, you know authority subdivided by type of marketing channel where uh, you know the sales people uh, reports to sales manager chain stores or the sales person reports to the wholesaler or he reports to the institutional uh, you know manager institutional sales or the manager export sales. So, this is typical in terms of the marketing channel. So, we see that we, we what we what gets emerged is different kinds of structures uh, whether based on uh, you know geography or whether based on product or whether based on uh, the marketing channel or on the customer. So, this brings us to an end of the fifth lecture on the second module of the course. Uh, we shall be uh, continuing with uh, the sub with, with the, you know the, the subsequent lectures uh, we shall be starting with uh, module 3. Uh, the References for this particular lecture still Kandev Govani Puri Sales and Distribution Management Pearson India, Havaldar and Kavale Sales and Distribution Management Megro Hill Education, Panda and Saydev Sales and Distribution Management Oxford University Press and Futural Fundamentals of Selling Megro Hill Education. Uh, I hope you have benefited out of this session. Uh, we shall start with module 3 in the next session. Thank you.